Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, really good to see uh, so many faces. Um, we're happy to, to be here on the occasion of uh, the translation into English of Ijab uh latest book, La Linea del Colore, uh, The Color Line in English. Um, Ijaba Shego was born in Rome to a family of Somali ancestry. Uh, she holds a PhD in education on post-colonial subjects, and she's done extensive academic work in Italy and around the world. Uh, the Italian edition of the color line, thank you, uh, which we, we have here, La Linea del Colore, won the Premio Napoli, and Ijaba's memoir, La Mia Casa e Dove Sono, uh, was awarded Italy's prestigious Mondello Prize. Shego received the Viareggio uh, Versilia International Award in 2021, and her previous novels, uh, some of which uh, we have here and sort of in the, in the background, are Beyond Babylon, that's from 2019, Adwa from 2017. Uh, Shego is a frequent contributor to La Lettura, the literary suppl supplement of the Corriere della Sera, which is uh, Italy's most, uh, most national paper, sort of New York Times of Italy. And uh, she also contributes to the magazines Internazionale uh, and Conforti, and she is the co-editor of an, an anthology uh, titled Africana. So first, we're very, very happy to have her, and I invite you to join me in welcoming her here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, we, we want this to be you know, a conversation, uh, not just between myself and Ijaba, but also with, with all of you. So please feel free to uh, you know, jump in with your questions as well. Um, Ijaba, uh, could you tell us uh, a bit about this book? I mean, where did the idea come from? And uh, how did you start, uh, start writing it and, and working on it? What's, what's the story behind the story? Okay. I want to say thank you because I'm so happy to be here with you in Boston, Boston University. And I want to say thank you to my publisher, Ada Press, because I'm staying here for this English translation. And um, it's so amazing to see my books in English and above all this book in English because uh, um, it's related in a way with American life and uh, American history. It's not only American history, but uh, my main character. Uh, because this book is divided in two parts, one part set in 19th century and the other part is a uh, contemporary story. And uh, in 19th century the main character was Lafano Brown, it's Lafano Brown. Lafano Brown is a fictional character and I realized this character because, uh, based by two real figure that I study and um, two African-American women uh, that live in my city, Rome, in 19th century. And this is amazing for me. When I discovered the story of Edmonia Lewis uh, and uh, Sarah Parker Raymond, I say, oh my God, two black women in my city, Rome, and they follow her dreams in that city. You know, this is something amazing for me. And Edmonia Lewis was an artist, a sculptor, and now there is a stamp in US dedicated to Edmonia Lewis, and if you have time to go to New York, there is an exhibition uh, uh, about abolitionism in the Metropolitan Art Museum, and in the center of the room, there is a one sculpture of Edmonia Lewis is uh, forever free and I studied this culture a lot when I saw there I say oh my god Edmonia you stay here because I have this relationship with this uh, Ed with Edmonia and Sarah a sister we are in a way this sisterhood and the forever free is a so important sculpture of her career because it's, um, she was um, Native American and African American with heritage from Haiti so this is interesting for me. And she became artist really in Italy because uh, many Americans, above all men, uh, came in Italy, you know, to improve their knowledge in art. And 
then um, another uh, other other um, historical figure uh, is uh, was a uh, Sarah Parker Raymond. Sarah Parker Raymond was an abolitionist and an activist, and in Italy became a midwife. And uh, I love her bio biography because she's a really uh, feminist. And she's really powerful, and she married uh, 50 when she has 50 had uh, 50 years old. Something really, you know, powerful for a woman of that time. And if you see the Edmonia, for example, life, uh, she was a lesbian. So there are two free women, uh, and she tried to live free as black people in that time. And this is powerful for me. Um, I discovered the, the, the Edmonia, and um, because Edmonia I discovered because I'm so interested in a black presence in art. Uh, as an artist and as a subject in art. And um, Sarah, Sarah, this is a wonderful story. I have a friend, Cristina Vueric. We are, uh, we have in common Caetano Veloso because we love uh, Brazilian music. <laughs> and uh, she sent to me uh, a picture of uh, Sarah Parker. And she said, maybe this is a good subject for you for a new novel. And you know, uh, my friends helped me to write a novel. So this is wonderful. And um, of course, um, uh, I tried to do uh, this story about African-American, but it's not uh, an novel of African American. It's a, a novel by African European uh, writer. And I try to recreate in that novel, uh, there is uh, several la layers, but I try to recreate in that novel uh, my journey to blackness. Because as a second generation in Italy, I try to discover myself uh, uh, t through US. You know, all, all the people, uh, uh, the, the my generation, not only my generation, uh, that live in Italy, and I was born in 1974. Uh, I remember I'm the only black in the room, in the school, in the block, you know, and, and you try to understand yourself, you know, and the people, I remember, in that time there is something racist, biological racism and I remember in 1970s uh, at the end, at the end, in the beginning of 1980 there is a um, series in our television, real famous uh, Roots, maybe you know that. Uh, and um, the main character was a Kunta Kinte, and uh, this, uh, this enslaved woman that tried to become free. And this story is powerful. But you know, in my school in Italy, it became you are Kunta Kinte and you are slave. You know, and this is quite um, terrible when you when you have four, five years old, and you don't understand this word slave and. The, and the other, the N word. This is quite tricky and difficult for me. And um, and for that reason, I begin to study blackness. And uh, when I became to study blackness, I oh, I met African American civil rights movements, and uh, I met Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and both all Malcolm X in the first time because I read the diary. And um, and uh, of course James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, and all these people. Uh, and I understand that they do something great here and um, and little by little uh, I try to become African-American but I understand as my generation understand that we have to create our own language so my travel uh, is beginning to Italy and came here in the United States and then I discovered that I have to come back to Italy and recreate my language, my history, the presence of black people in Italy because it's so important for my life, you know. And with this character, Lafanu Brown, I recreate a traveling, my opposite travel, you know, because she discovered herself not in the US but in Europe. This is, and not in any Europe, Italy. So this is a, it's a quite the opposite travel that I did before, and um, yeah, this is powerful for me to 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 recreate that. And I try to do, um, in the process of writing, I study a lot because you know it's a historical novel. 
but I find I use a um, fantasy too because I'm, I'm a novelist and I change names there is tricky things in the book but um, uh, because I want to become more free you know uh, to, to write what, what I want really and I want to show um, several things of course what happened here in US in that time you know is this book begins a little bit before civil war and um, it's about uh, and the civil war is no main is no main topic of the book the main topic of the book is the travel in Italy and the travel is Italy is a topos is something you know uh, that the um, noble and upper class they the to improve their knowledge and uh, above all men you know and when I try to do research about that, I try to find the trouble of women because I'm interested in women, you know, and I discovered that women in general, in, I, in, this means white women, American white women, uh, became more free in uh, in Italy or in Spain, but in, in Italy above all, because uh, it is, um, uh, they um, stay out of the control of the society mm -hmm. and uh, above all they they reconnect with, with their body and uh, they choose for example love in different way different gender different orientation this is so interesting for me to, to understand the freedom of these women and I think in Edmonia and Sara uh, it's not only women things it's black women you know it's free from the fears to enslave uh, uh, because you know you, you they live in a free black community but of course you are black and you are always in danger you know and uh, for the reason go to Italy means for for them freedom mm -hmm. and but I want to show something in that in that book uh, Italy is no uh, empty space is no a space uh, innocent space because James Baldwin always told us that innocence was a crime and, uh, uh, and Italy stay in the story of Europe and story of Europe is a story of borderlands, colonialism and uh, of course uh, is slavery and I want to show that in this book that is Italy uh, uh, for my, my character for La Fanu Brown is a space that she invented her new life but little by little she understand that um, all racism and discrimination stay in Italy too for example it's so important for me in that novel um, um, the black presence in art and because uh, of course uh, in that moment in Italy they deny the black people or citizenship we have a lot of problem with citizenship uh, law if you are a um, migrant or you know your heritage came from abroad and you you get your 18 years old you became foreigner in your own country and this is quite um, horrible if you think you know and uh, for that reason I know that Italy deny blackness because in a way she uh, it uh, as a country um, it create her whiteness because Italy is not white uh, at all because Italy is a mix of every everything you know everybody and um, but with colonialism uh, she tried to create this whiteness mm -hmm. and I want to show that uh, this whiteness is nonsense and I use in this book and La Fanu see around her a black presence in art Carpaccio for example the black gondolier Veronese and uh, the, the main many black characters in Veronese uh, even Botticelli I don't use Botticelli but there is Botticelli pilgrim Ethiopian pilgrims okay. in the uh, system chapel and I use a lot and there is a main uh, monument and my, my character was obsessed by this monument it's four moors Le quattro mori, but two of these four moors are uh, women, black women, as Lafano Brown, and uh, they are in chain and naked. So when you see the monument in Marino, Marino is a small city near Rome, you think in rape. 
you think in violence, you think in exploitation, and uh, um, and this is so strange for me because uh, in Marino no one knows, no one see for real the monument is a um, is a um, is a. Um, it's a monument of the grape and the wine during the holiday of the grape and the wine that they did every year, and uh, I, um, and this is quite crazy. And my, uh, my Lafanu Brown see the statue and understand what happened to to these women of marble, of course, but of course there are connection past and present was there, and there is violence in between. Then I want to say something uh, about, uh, before contemporary part. I want to say something about Italian Italians uh, because, of course, I work um, different layers in this book, and one is racism against Italians because I'm Italian and um, I'm not. And I try, I try to protect my identities in a way. And um, and when I study uh, several books to write uh, this book, and I um, I read novels as uh, Margot Fan, Hawthorne, or Corina Litali, Madame de Stel, and others in diaries, and all these you know, novels and diaries say the same thing. Oh, Italy is so beautiful. But oh my God, this Italian ruins all, you know, and this is horrible, you know, and this is racism. And uh, of course, I use the contemporary pop culture too. For example, movie as It Pray and Love, or um, It Pray and Love is really horrible because you see Italy <laughs> as, you know, primitive world without hot water, and you say in, in the downtown Rome without hot water. Yeah, and this is the same. It's nonsense, but under the task and sun, and even I use the series Friends. You remember in the nineties, uh, Friends. I love Friends because it's a, uh, it's no, you laugh a little bit. It's no stress, but it's so stereotype movie. Uh, again, um, it's against LGBTQ plus black people and Italians because there are two characters. One is Joey Tribbiani, one of the friends, Italian American, and other one is Paolo. And uh, Joey Tribbiani was obsessed by food and sex, <laughs> and uh, Paolo is rapist so you know and I understand that there is something there and I want to add in this book you know because um, little by little uh, and in uh, um, Lafano Brown understand the environment in US and the environment in Italy and that moment Italy fight for freedom you know, for for the unification of the country, and uh, and this is real. This is I take for the biography of Sarah Parker Ramon because Sarah Parker Ramon helped Mazzini and Garibaldi, two of the hero of the Risorgimento, and uh, and was involved. In, and you know, it is quite interesting that um, uh, many abolitionists in the U.S. was connected with the fight uh, to here in the United States to free, you know, enslaved people, but involved with, with Causa Siciliana. Mm. Causa Siciliana meaning the Risorgimento, meaning what happens in Italy for their freedom. So they send money, you know, and this is interesting. And Sara helped Italians, a black woman uh, that try to fight for her life, send the money to, to unification of Italy. And this is really powerful. And I want to add this kind of things in the book because it's a, it's a book about Risorgimento too, because it's involved with that. And, um, and of course, it's a book about Rome. Uh, but I wait your question too because I talk a lot. Maybe you have another question. <laughs> I have sorry. many. I have many. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm also curious to hear. And then you know, because I want to say, I want to explain the contem contemporary part. Right. Of the we novel. have to get to that. So, so there's also there's also a character who's uh, who's organizing an art exhibition yeah. and who's interested in this life story of. Uh, Lafanu. I mean, how how does how does that come into play? Yeah, Leila is the key. I think is the key character of the book because connected the two part of the book. Leila is like me, African Italian, 
and uh, Somali Italian and uh, it's not me because I always in, in, in Italy I always I have to explain this is not autobiography <laughs> this is a novel and fiction and uh, this is quite strange because um, they expect from black people only you know your memoir and I love memoir I, for example in February I will publish a memoir but um, this is a fiction and I, I and I use um, a name of my a friend of mine Leila El Hussi uh, because Leila was this is a, a gift that I give to her Leila is uh, the only African woman uh, with African heritage that uh, work in university no one no other woman no other women with African heritage stay in Italian University only Leila and this is horrible because you know we are plural society and we have only Leila and we have another guy in Macerata well the Lul Kelati but that's it you know and I, I give the the name of Leila for that reason and um, Leila in, in this book is a um, art curator and uh, she became art curator for Marino for the monument of Marino because it was uh, something uh, so painful for her when she discovered that she is the only black woman not in the room but in the Marino and all the people uh, didn't see the painful of the naked woman and black women there but only her understand what happened there so she became our creator to give a new view to the people this is a meaning of her job but uh, there is another meaning uh, um, she's of course Somali heritage and uh, the Somali ancestry and this means you are related with war and dictatorship and the horrible story of Somalia the, uh, in that time I love Somalia it's a wonderful place and wonderful people but we have a big problem 32 years of civil war you know and this is means trauma means several things and when she studied Lafano Brown she involved in the life of Lafano Brown her cousin from Somalia uh, did a tahrib tahrib means um, the travel uh, that um, migrants it's not migrants, I, I use travelers than migrants because in that moment you are not migrants, you are in travel, you know, you are movement. Uh, um, travelers used to be from Africa to Europe and, and you know what happened there. You have to pay a lot of money, uh, no one give you a visa, uh, you have to pay smugglers and then something, someone maybe rape you or beat you in, during the itinerary and if you survive you have to pay another money or ask your family uh, and take a boat, you know, all this stuff and came in Italy, Lampedusa and this kind of journey is um, a journey of middle class middle class in Europe or in the United States used to have a passport with a strong passport and you can go everywhere and you pay a flight to go everywhere no one uh, beat you or rape you and uh, you, you came safe to the place that they want to, to go but for the middle class I say middle class because it's important to understand that because uh, uh, the poor people in Africa can afford the, the travel because the travel is really expensive and, uh, and some mm, really um, people that do that uh, ask the help of the relatives all over the world the diaspora so they collect money you know for for the for travelers so uh, this is quite unfair and it's no it's no justice because uh, we have uh, you, if you go to to internet and to see the passport index you see strong passport and weak passport uh, our passport united states and italian is so strong italian is more strong than the united states maybe because it's i don't know why uh, because it's a third position yeah schengen i think for schengen uh, uh, um, uh, we are third position yeah and this is quite uh, 
uh, you know, sad for me because when I see Somalia, Somalia is the end of the list. It's one of the most weak uh, passport ever. And this meaning that the people with my face, with my nose, with my eyes, with my color skin, uh, they have suffered to travel. And this is horrible. And I, I wrote this novel because, uh, because of this uh, injustice, you know. Uh, always, my, always my book is uh, politics. It is involved with politics in it because it's, of course, it's, uh, it's fiction. Uh, but with inside uh, a message, of course, I'm not I'm not pedagogical because I want to. I, I love style, I love language, I love you know uh, description, landscape, and I use flowers and I, I use a lot of flowers in this book, for example. But um, I want to send a message to the world. The message is uh, we live in apartheid. And this, I, I want to show with the story of, of Leila, Lafanu, and Binti. Uh, Binti is the cousin of Leila, um, the injustice of, of the system. And uh, because every day uh, something happens about uh, migrant things. Even now in Italy there is a boat that the people stay in this boat, no one wants to care for them. So this is quite sad. In Greece one month ago um, 20, 25 Somali women, so young, died near Greece coast. So every day something happened, you know, about that. And every day something happened, no all Africa, sometimes all Africa, but sometimes Somalia, you know, is something involved with my, my people and my two countries. So I'm, I'm, I'm really obsessed about that. And um, of course, I use it a uh, lot of art because for art curator, Leila was art curator, and um, I try to uh, show not only black presence in art, but sometimes the exploitation of blackness in art. Uh, or uh, because I I remember this uh, navy uh, that he used as a. Um, how do you say performance or uh, art, visual art in uh, Biennale di Venezia was really a, you know boat that the migrant died there mm -hmm. and, and the people take coffee and sandwich uh, next to this grave. For me it's a grave and the other people is uh, something uh, art you know so sometimes we have to be careful what what is art and what is not. I think it's not art to see a navy in that. Yeah, with a, something really bad for me. You know, you you need um, some empathy. And empathy is another you know purpose that I have. It's not empathy, but it's a responsibility. It's, I don't know the, the the right word. But um, I I know that in in Italy, uh, not only in Italy, in Europe in general, but I think here with uh, the borderland between Mexico and United States, um, the people really don't want to hear what happened there. They don't want, they don't care, they don't, it's not my business, yeah, they came back from Africa, why they came here and so on. And, um, but the, the, the people uh, don't think in the problem of mobility, because uh, the, the, the news always say migration. But sometimes it's no migration. The people in Africa want only to move from place to place for many reasons. Love, uh, family, uh, sometimes job. Sometimes only, you know, we want to study in university. And I think if you pay this money to a hotel in Europe instead to pay smugglers, it's better. You know, you are in, a, you know, you become part of the, the movement. But there is, the problem is mobility for me. This is a, this is a big problem. And, um, and I show with Binti because Binti don't want to migrate to Europe. They want to see Europe. They want to become a, how do you say, a graphic novelist in a way, you know. And there is something that I, I try to explain with the fiction. And uh, of course, um, I notice this lack of empathy and I think maybe I can write an essay or I can write um, 
an article, but maybe it's better fiction. Mm -hmm. And I uh, use 19th century because it's a moment of 19th century. Uh, remember this cover of Jane Austen uh, in 1995, I think 1996. Of course, it's 1970, 1980, it's not the same. And uh, I started a lot to create my love and brown you know and uh, I want to add a love story in this book I don't want to tell uh, I don't want to do a spoiler but I want to to add a love story between black people because it's something in the Italian literature don't see at all. You see only, uh, sometimes you see a uh, mixed uh, couple or no couple. You see uh, people uh, interact uh, in se with sex or rape and you fly on, for example, time, time to kill or um, sometimes the, your, the, the black woman is, is only a body, you know, a body of dream or body of exotic body and I want a man, you know, black man is a select garbage in, in the mind of, you know, it, it, not in Italians, of course, in Europe, you use us uh, mm, a, a body that they want to see for real, only for soccer or mm. for sport, mm. but no, no other uh, purpose. So I try to create this love story between black people too, and uh, and I want to show you know all this stuff with fiction. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I think you've done a really fantastic job of framing this book for us and yeah. also in you know, diving into some of the issues that it deals with. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to me that as soon as you start doing that... Yeah, yeah. The reading, the oh, shall we do a reading? Yeah, yeah maybe. Okay. We're going to yeah, do a I reading. Yeah, I read in okay. Italian, mm -hmm. uh, in English, okay. Okay, sure. Allora, fu tra i 17 e i 18 anni ovvero tra il 1859 e il 1860, in quell'anno magico in cui fu allieva di Lizzie Manson, che la Fanu Brown scoprì l'Italia. L'Italia era qualcosa che la Fanu stringeva tra le sue piccole e grandi mani ansiose di futuro. Fu Lizzie naturalmente a consigliarle delle letture, a cui presto la Fanu divenne devota. Erano libri corposi, suadenti, dalla scrittura fitta e a tratti morbosa. L'Italia era tutto un castello in fiamme, un lago tenebroso, una masnada di monaci lussuriosi. L'Italia era un mistero, denso, fatto di camere nascoste e trappole disseminate lungo i sentieri per ingannare i giovani cavalieri armati solo dei loro cuori impavidi. Era un mare impetuoso, l'Italia, un mare di demoni, dal viso leggiadro, mostri che illudevano il prossimo con un sorriso prima di divorarlo in pieno sole. Era un mare di streghe che sapevano come trasformare un uomo in un maiale. Era un mare di paura, ma l'Italia era anche una montagna troppo alta da scalare. Era la secca che bloccava le navi, era la fauce di un lupo affamato. Era Circe, era Scilla, era Carridi, la dolce Sibilla, le Sabine oltraggiate, era Beatrice la disdegnosa, Caterina la santa, Artemisia la coraggiosa, Sofonisba la talentuosa. L'Italia era un piede infreddolito e scalzo, una libra di carne consumata. L'Italia era la pasta asciutta, il sugo, i bomboloni ripieni, le viscere condite con le cipolle. L'Italia era la natura che prendeva il sopravvento sull'uomo, la natura che faceva tremare la terra e il cielo, che ricopriva di aspidi la strada maestra degli eroi. Ma l'Italia era anche il bene che la gente si voleva, era fatta di baci appassionati in sottoscala luridi, era plasmata sugli amori adulterini che si perdevano nel caos delle menzogne. Ah Italia, terra di amori contrastati e di sovrani corrotti, terra di adulterio e tradimento, un tradimento di la bocca mi baciò tutto tremante. It was when she was 17 and 18, in 1859 and 1860, during the magical year that she spent as Lizzie Manson's pupil, that Lafanu Brown discovered Italy. Italy was something that Lafanu, apprehensive about the future, grasped tightly in her small but growing hands. Lizzie, of course, recommended books for her to read, and the girl quickly fell in love with them. They were substantial, persuasive books, thickly, sometimes morbidly written. 
Italy was a castle in flames, a dark lake, a band of libidinous monks. Italy was a tangled mystery made of hidden rooms and traps scattered along its pathways to fool young knights, whose only weapon was a fearless heart. Italy was a tempestuous sea, a sea of demons, with comely faces, monsters that duped their fellow humans with a smile before devouring them in broad daylight. It was a sea with islands where there were witches who could turn men into swine. It was a sea of fear, but it was also a mountain too high to climb. It was the shallows where ships ran aground. It was the jaws of a famished wolf. It was Circe. It was Scylla. It was Charbidus, the gentle Sibyl, the outraged Sabines. It was Beatrice, the disdainful, Catherine, the saint, the, bra the brave Artemisia, the gifted Sophonisba. Italy was a chilled bare foot, a pound of consumed flesh. Italy was pasta, sauce, puff pastry, with filling, entrails seasoned with onions. Italy was nature gaining the upper hand over man, nature making sky and earth tremble, nature covering the heroes' high road with asps. But Italy was also its people's love for one another. It was made of passionate kisses, exchanged in dirty understairs closets. It was shaped to fit adulterous loves lost in a chaos of lies. Ah, Italy, land of thwarted love and corrupt sovereigns, land of adultery and betrayal of Paolo's trembling kiss on Francesca's mouth. Thank you. Thank you. We'd of course like to open up for, for questions, so please. Uh, did you ever um, think about Othello or Othello to Americans in the, um, from um, um, the play by Shakespeare and like your um, stories of, um, of the various blacks in Italy? Um, yeah, this is interesting about Othello because a friend of mine, Shaul Bassi, is a professor of La Foscari. He's an English literature professor in La Foscari. He's a one expert of Othello. And we wrote together uh, something, an essay about blackface. Uh, but I never think in Othello really. Uh, but I, I think more for the, this novel, of course, about uh, Edmonia and, uh, and Sarah. But um, but I think more in the paintings that I use in, the, in this uh, above all the black gondolier in Venice in the Museum of Academia so beautiful Carpaccio and uh, there are diver in the same room there is a painting of Gentile Bellini with uh, this black, black man that tried to save a relic with the other people too because the relic is in the lagoon and he tried to save it and he's naked and uh, this is interesting for me why he uh, tried to save the relic he, they push them from they push him, and someone push him or he want to participate to um, to the citizenship in Venice, so there is some. Uh, I think this book came from the art, mm -hmm. visual art, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. yeah, more than Shakespeare because yeah, I'm not so expert of Shakespeare, of course. And um, when I think in Shakespeare, uh, the, the I, I love Shakespeare as the human being, but uh, uh, um, I'm not so expert. And uh, of course, you when you think black in Italy, the people think in Otello, but uh, the story of black, black presence is, is really huge, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, and I'm Roman and. Uh, this meaning Roman Empire. I live in a popular area of Rome uh, called Torpenatara. We talked before, and um, and um, and when I think in my neighborhood in Rome, of course it's popular area. It's a nice, there are many buildings from fascism until uh, until 1970. But it's interesting because we see ruins sometimes, you know, from Roman Empire, and there is Porta Maggiore and in our city was an African dynasty was Settimio Severo and Caracalla and this is interesting because when I uh, I take this bus 81 because it's my you know it's a 
uh, I, I have this problem. I haven't I car and I have I have problem with drive, driving. So I have take a pass in Rome as a challenge. And but and uh, when I take this A21, of course it's a, like a sightseeing bus because it's called you see Colosseum and and of course I see always the Caracalla terms, you know. And this is interesting because Caracalla is uh, Rome in a way, you know. His mother came from Middle East and his father came from Leptismania. Leptismania is Libya now. So, uh, you know, the character uh, of the city, the behavior, sorry, of the city, in a way, is so international. And uh, I live in this uh, international heritage all my life, you know. And I think came from that. This novel came from more, it's not a literary model. Of course, there are something that I study to write, but it's 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 about Rome because I study a lot my city, and I try to forget my city because it's you know as a Roman it's quite difficult to understand the people that came from abroad and see Colosseum for the first time. I see Colosseum every time, <laughs> so this is quite. And I try to to forget my identity to write this book. And um, I try to leave the same situation of Lafreno Brown. I went around to the city, and um, um, in, in the city of Lafreno Brown, it's not so big as my Rome. The city of Lafreno Brown was uh, the downtown, the main street, Via del Corso, you know, and uh, there is a um, uh, um, foreigner live in um, Piazza di Spagna, you know, Kitts and Shelley Museum stay there. Byron live there too. And um, and I try to understand this uh, borderlands of her home. And uh, I use uh, the real address of Edmonia Lewis, uh, Via della Frezza, uh, 57, because uh, she lived there. <laughs> so I use for Lafano Brown the same house. And uh, I used to go to as a pilgrim <laughs> in front of the house. Now this is a shop, something like that, and it's a crowded place. And uh, there is a store of shoes, and yeah, it's not like a 19th century, of course. But I I try to rememorize her her life. And Rome is, you know, is, I love the English. Um, um, edition of the book because you see the skyline of Rome is so real powerful and because Rome is one of the characters of this book mm -hmm. for me and uh, because I try to understand the city and I, d I try to um, um, draw the moment of big passage from a Pope you know, uh, and Italy, you know, and 1870. This is a key moment of the story of the city. And there is a separation uh, of um, contemporary Roman uh, to the river. You know, before 1870, the people leave the river. And Edmonia Lewis, in this, in this book, leave the Tevere. A Tevere is stay there with her and she connected with the river. But for me, it's something really strong to understand the river because the contemporary Roma uh, have no relationship at all with the river mm -hmm. as in the past. Yeah. I, I wanted to thank you because you really, everything you said was really uh, eye-opening in many regards. And I wanted to uh, ask you about you know, contemporary Italy, you sort of, at one point you said, I want to talk about it, but then we, uh, I think... It, yeah, I it, talk about Leila. But, no, my question is more, maybe, I would like to know your opinion on, um, you know, the way contemporary Italians and maybe younger generations um, are trying to um, overcome certain barriers um, because when you uh, when you look at what the let's say the mass media is, is is proposing, right? I think a lot of times there are very stereotypical maybe images or um, characters and uh, even interactions, as you were referring to maybe friends. But even if you met friends is you know 20 years old, but if you look maybe at more movies, there aren't very many examples, or maybe there are now. I'm, I'm, um, but my uh, my question is also, 
is social media helping a lot? Because I know there are, for example, many young Italians um, of maybe African origin whose parents had immigrated to, to Italy, but who are born, uh, raised, and they, they, are, they feel Italian, they want to be Italian, and they, and they know they are Italian. But a lot of times, uh, I think on social media, like on Instagram, and uh, especially Instagram, um, <laughs> yeah. they, they make an effort to explain to their audience what it feels to be uh, an Italian that is trying to understand his or her identity. In, yeah. in, and I think that maybe is, is very useful. I don't know, what is your opinion on that? Yeah, no, yeah, there is a... Uh, and young generation black young gen uh, you, you asked me about black yeah. people you know um, black Italians so um, it's an interesting moment for me because uh, I did um, before the pandemic before the COVID-19 I did um, an anthology and I collect stories of black women above all uh, black young women but not all young but most of them uh, and I call this um, uh, anthology future is meaning uh, the future you know it's not futuro but future in, um, and um, I, I did it because I want uh, I'm, I'm the generation of the, the in, in between the old generation and the young generation this is so really interesting because the first black people that wrote something uh, they published in 1919 in Italy um, mm -hmm. people are, as uh, Pap Kuma or uh, Salah Metnani uh, Salah is a journalist uh, really famous in uh, television in Dry News 24 and uh, Pap Kuma still writing and um, still discuss about Senegalese and he translated Dante in uh, Wolof, this is a powerful. And um, and there are many people that came that period uh, as Kosi Komla Ebri or from Togo and they are all migrants. They came from in Italy and tried to write in Italian and um, and try to write about their experience uh, in Italy and as a migrant and discrimination but sometimes with irony with sadness and, and this is an interesting moment there are many many people Cristiana de Caldas Brito and from Brazil many of them then we came uh, my generation uh, um, Amara Lacusa I forget uh, um, my generation is call it so called second generation I, I don't like second generation because I, we are Italian. Uh, of course, we Italian Somali or Italian Nigerian, Italian something, but we are Italians. And second generation of, sometimes uh, they called us second generation of immigrant. Immigrant from where? I was born in Italy. So this is quite strange. My friend Gabriella Curubilla, we, we wrote a, a book together in 2005. Um, she always said, yeah, I'm immigrant. I moved from Quarto Giaro. A neighbor in Milan to Corso Buenos Aires, another street in Milan. So this is a big migration of Gabriella Curuvilla, <laughs> and this is wonderful. And Gabriella Curuvilla is one of the top writers because she's a Indian heritage and Italian, and so this is interesting. Uh, and when um, and we we began to write in 2003-2005 and of course so we are different from people uh, that came in Italy because we grew up in Italy and uh, school all our school our language is Italian and um, and of course uh, one of the topic at the beginning was identity uh, all the people in US because I I did a tour in US all the people say oh, I, I read your sausages it's a, it's, a, it's a short story that I wrote that in that time about identity because identity was a the top subject uh, who you are who, are, who am I you know and, um, and little by little uh, su this subject of identity was connected with history you know and uh, we try to understand co Italian colonialism and uh, because it's, uh, most of them uh, most of, the, of us sorry most of us are 
came from uh, Horn of Africa or heritage from Horn of Africa, uh, Cristina Lifara, Somalia, or Gabriela Germandi, Ethiopia, uh, and me of Somalia. So this is interesting for us to understand the connection of the, our two countries. And then came this new generation. New generation, so interesting, they are uh, from 24 until 30, 31, and they came from all over Africa. Uh, they came. They was born in Italy, but their parents came from all over Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, and so on. And they live in different parts of Italy, in the north, uh, and as Esperanza Cusimana, or in south as Jarakan. And it's interesting because they explain not only, you know, the difference in, about, you know, African heritage, but even uh, between north and south of Italy and uh, they are activists and writers at the same time and, um, and, and when I collect these uh, short stories I, don't, I didn't expect big success and the book began a big success. It's not, it's, it's, all the story is not perfect, you know, but uh, I think Italy needed it. <laughs> and and this, is a, this is a powerful, the, the people ask uh, the presentation of this book everywhere. And, um, you know, the writers became more writers, you know. And now Esperanza Cusimana and Jara Khan was one of the top writers. Jara Khan wrote for La Repubblica and uh, Speranza Cusimana did the first, uh, did two books, one memoir and one uh, uh, novel, fiction. So little by little something changed, you know, and there is another one, and um, Nadesha Uyongoda, uh, from, uh, um, she's uh, from Milan, um, Heritage from Sri Lanka. She wrote a book, uh, the only uh, the one, the only one person in the room, the black person in the room, and this is really powerful because it's a essay, she's an essayist, no novelist. But uh, um, there are many of these kind of essays in Europe and in the UK and the US, uh, but not in Italy. This is the first one that tried to think in uh, identity uh, related with race and class, and, uh, and this is quite something new for Italy. And, um, and I think we are all connected, because in that moment there are, and I did, this is interesting, I did um, in May, a uh, discussion public I organize I don't I don't talk but I organize this um, moment of talking with Pakuma one of the first writer and Esperanza Cusimana uh, one of the, the the new generation writers and in the middle Angie Mubiai. Angie Mubiai is like me, uh, the, the generation in between, and we wrote together Pecore Nere. And this is powerful for me to see these three generations together in a room. And I think it's interesting, something happened uh, to uh, Italy, and something happened even in the um, literature world, in the literature world in Italy. Because before, no one cares about these people. Now, uh, even the colleagues, Italian colleagues, white, so-called white, uh, interested a lot, interact a lot with the black writers, and this is powerful. I think it's a really, really interesting moment. Thank you. May I ask Elizabeth if we have time for another question? How are we running on time? Oh, I think absolutely, right? We're doing okay? Okay. Yeah. So it, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I have so many questions. Okay. No, no, maybe you collect two. No, no, maybe we collect the two questions and then I answer. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to say I. I mean, I have actually maybe several questions mm -hmm. being sparked by uh, both by the book and, and your presentation. I loved in the in the book how you bring together two centuries, two eras. Um, through these two women artists, um, the fact that one is a portraitist, and um, perhaps I had a question about that. Uh, the, the choice of, you know, she could have been a painter, but it's also that she, she, La Fano Brown, is, is also looking very specifically at people, their face, their way of being. So I like the way how it unfolds in different ways of looking at people and bringing them 
together, but also looking at them very closely. I um, also like the way you, you bring us both at the, in Dogali and yeah, in Rome, and how you, you combine spaces uh, simultaneous, simultaneously. Um, so perhaps one of the questions I had was also there is, uh, the epistolary is also there, uh, with letters, with letters. emails, and maybe yeah. if you could comment on that. Because okay. I, it's kind of a tour de force with what you're doing, bringing together spaces, centuries, artists, and well, how they connect. Yeah. I was also intrigued about what you do with a uh, very classical form, the, the epistolary, but yeah. how you renew it. Yeah, I love epistolary. And uh, I think I follow to, to write a letter, I think all my books is a letter. <laughs> this is my idea because uh, this is it came. Like this is a came it, from yeah. oral uh, literature because, of course, I'm Italian, but I'm Somali too, mm -hmm. and Somali means oral language, oral literature, and uh, Somali. Uh, um, uh, writing uh, was born with me in, in around 1973-1974. Before the people don't, didn't write Somali language, it's always always oral. And even after, you know, they now they of course there are the newspaper in Somali, but the, the language is not so flexible as an oral language. And in Somalia was called the land of poets and I'm not a poet but my family is my mom for example mm -hmm. uh, used to sing used to create poems uh, every time and she she's involved with words and I live in this environment you know and uh, and always I try to find a rhythm in my language and in a way I need a people or a person that I told a story, a tell a story. And I need, for example, in Adwa, I use uh, um, uh, the elephant of Bernini. This is the Adwa, tell her story to this elephant. And you know, I need something. Mm -hmm. And letter is wonderful for me. And um, the new book, for example, it's a, it's a letter. Uh, and uh, here I use epistolary because of course, it's 19th century uh, style in a way. The old people uh, wrote letters and to other people, but uh, and but I I need to do that because sometimes it's, it's, uh, uh, the action is not direct. You have to explain something that uh, happened before. And letter is wonderful, but letter means to me more than that. It's not only you know the technique of writing, but it's uh, something more deep because I need to tell the story to other. people person. And there is in this book uh, a short story since, uh, inside and over. The, the first part of the story, the dogali one, mm -hmm. when uh, uh, before La Fanua entered the scene, it, 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 in a way is my answer to the nuncio. Uh, Gabriele D'Annunzio uh, uh, is an Italian uh, writer, really famous. Uh, this novel called Il Piacere. And in the middle of the Il Piacere, there is Dogali. Uh, and he says something about Dogali. And, uh, and I want to recreate, in a way, uh, this space. Uh, the news came in Italy, but in a different way from the nuncio. This is my, this is a, sometimes a writer use tricky things with themselves and uh, you try to answer to the nuncio that die 100 years. Yeah, but this is a crazy thing. Uh, uh, um, because, um, of course, um, some many bad things came from the denuncio, fascism and you know and um, and I think it's interesting for me to recreate this scene in a different way with a black woman and I, I think this first part of, of the novel is a short story inside the novel and it's the Dogali, and now, um, now there is a square in Italy, in Rome, called it Piazza di Cinquecento, it's a main street, it's a main square, sorry, of uh, railroad station, La Stazione Termini, and uh, I'm obsessed about La Stazione Termini, and um, I'm, this is no spoiler, but Adwa finished in La Piazza di Cinquecento, uh, and I, and this book begins when Adwa finished, in a way, you know, and 
um, I, I, even I do a um, audio documentary about uh, this square and it's coming up in uh, February and this is interesting because I'm I think all my literature the people say you describe Rome is, is true but sometimes I describe Termini because it's, it's a place of colonialism we, we see traces of colonialism the name of the square there is an obelisk there uh, was related with the history of Italian colonialism but it's the place of migrant that Capo Berdian, Eritrean, and Somali came in 1970. So for me, this connection is so strong, you know. And uh, I remember when I was a child, I have these pictures in my album in, at home, uh, me in a stazione termini, three years old. So, you know, I try, of course, uh, the writers use their life too to write the book, you know. Yeah, I think the last yeah, question. We have yeah. another question back yeah. here. Sure. Actually, I am a history of art student, so um, I'm from the Asian heritage, but I'm very interested in uh, Italian art. That's why I'm taking uh, Italian uh, as a, another language. And uh, like so I've always been interested in the visual art of Italy. And I think it's so powerful that because I feel like art is very all-encompassing. But like, uh, I used to be a curator before, so I can acknowledge um, the like this stereotype, like you know, it kind of very strange, the uh, intersectionality in the depictions of visual art. Uh, just as you said before, with the depictions of um, black heritage in uh, the art in Italy. So, what is your take on our current visual narrations now? Yeah. Yeah, this is a wow. This is a wonderful question. I don't know really, but I I try. I'm not a curator. Uh, I I use art to understand history. This is my point. But it's interesting uh, that uh, this moment is a moment that all the people in the world thinks in the presence diversity in art, not only blackness. So, you know, and um, for for us in heritage, there are. I don't remember, is it Tiziano? No, not Tiziano, Tinto, Tintoretto. I think Tintoretto. There are many, many people from all over the world in Renaissance art. So um, this is interesting for me, you know. And I think that museum or, uh, you know, uh, exhibition have to do something with this diversity. And this is so important. And in now moment in Rome, in my city, they want to open, and this is quite interesting project uh, at the Colonial Museum because they have uh, inherited all these propaganda objects from different museums and all the objects that the Italians take, fascists take from uh, Africa. And of course now uh, there are uh, two curators and one director with this horrible stuff of propaganda and uh, they know that this propaganda and they want to try to find a solution. You know, some object you have to come back to the countries that are, but sometimes it's difficult. Libya, for example, or Somalia, stay in war without a museum at all. And, and, and how to, uh, to do with the with this kind of situation and how do you show some terrible object to the people maybe you don't um, show it show it but maybe you show uh, for, for scholars or artists and you try to do something else and they think a lot about that they um, um, try to um, create an open space and, um, and the two creators are really good open space and uh, to speak with different people uh, not only uh, research scholars or uh, artists even the migrant community and this is so interesting because sometimes uh, uh, I remember this painter painting was Somali woman uh, the, 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 the painter was Italian the Somali woman so beautiful uh, with a comb and this comb is an object that disappeared in Somalia with civil war and they think to um, involve with Somali people to recreate something that they Somali miss with the war, 
you know, you create connection because it's a memory of different country. And um, of course it's colonialism, but it's, a, it's nonsense to hide. It's, it's a, it's a, you have to find a good way to use it to, f to the future because it's a history, you know. And I think the museum uh, in general still in that kind of way in try to understand more the catalog, what, what they have inside the museum. This is interesting for me. This is a good moment to understand and to create some new language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope this uh, museum opens soon in, in Rome. I think to 2024-25, but I'm, I'm not sure. But if you want to go as a scholar, you have only to write them and uh, to take an appointment. This is a really powerful thing to do when we stay in Rome. And when was the idea realized to um, found it? When was the idea conceived to found the museum? No, it's not found. This museum was built during the fascism. Oh, it was open uh, because Mussolini is Mussolini Museum, uh, and they have all these objects of propaganda. They stole it from there, and uh, or they take it, or I don't know, they buy it. And so, and in a different uh, area of the city, you find the store all the objects after the war, after the Second World War. The, the museum was open until 1970. Oh. And of course, uh, and these two curators and directors, the, 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 one di the first director died, died during the COVID. And now the other director came, um, and they have this object. They, how do you call it, an editato? How do you call it? They have inherited. Inherited, yeah, and just inherited um, all this object. And of course, you can. Uh, give them back sometimes because Somalia, Libya, this is quite tricky yes. and uh, they wait, some objects they wait to send back other objects it's quite impossible to send back, for example there are one room with beans Oh, one another broom. This is quite different object. Vegetables, um, marble, and there are um, anthropologists, Cipriani, mask. Uh, they take from the people alive, and this is quite tricky to show the people. And of course, they inherited this horrible object, and of course, they want to do something. This is really interesting. So, because it's really interesting, if you study colonialism, I say, for example, the paintings. I say, maybe you can show, you know, the mass of Cipriani, because it's really uh, horrible, you know, and, and, and violent. But maybe you can show the paintings, because I see the paintings of my, the city of my mom, Mogadishu, so beautiful. Uh, but we have to find a way, you know? And they involve with artists, they involve with migrant community, because they don't want to do this work alone as a white woman. They want, they want to do with people, you know, and I think this is so interesting. They are so smart curators, they try to involve with people, and this is um, 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 something new for, you know, because sometimes, you know, uh, in it when you see Italy, you think in Renaissance, and, but there are a lot of things about related with fascism, and uh, it's so interesting to know. So there is a I think Sabaudia. In Sabaudia there is this church with a mosaic and the Virgin Mary and next to the Virgin Mary Mussolini. Oh, no. You know, and there is sometimes you have to do something with all these traces, you know, in around the city. Around our cities, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we can Yeah, okay, please join me in thanking each other. Thanks very much.